This video will cover the aspects of crack deflection and crack widths in Adapt Floor Pro. And in this video we have two slabs that are set up. These are um, a slab that's a one-way slab in the X direction and a one-way slab in the Y direction. And we're going to um, show the, the differences and some of the results between the crack deflection reduced rotational stiffness results as well as the crack width results. And we have to make a few um, make sure we make a few settings and modifications to the model in order to be able to produce what result we wish to look at. So we'll go ahead and start in on the uh, topic here. You'll notice I have a, an 8 inch slab. This is done with ACI but the same applies to other codes that are included in the program. In addition this is for an RC slab. For a PT slab um, I'll show you a modification at the end of the video on how to report crack widths for PT slabs. So we have two 8 inch slabs. We have walls at the ends of each slab. And if I turn on the uh, support lines for X and Y, you'll see I also have an X direction support line. We want to change this to one way slab and a Y direction support line also. This is Y. Change that to a one-way slab. I'll go to criteria, general, and for criteria you can see I want to report the probable crack width. So the important, uh, the first important point is that the, the crack width that you are reporting is applicable to the service combinations. It is not applicable to cracked deflection combinations, even though they're both associated with really the same thing, whether the slab cracks or not. This is applicable only to service combinations and so when I say service combinations what I'm referring to really are under loading combinations I'm talking about any combination which is tagged as service total or service sustained it might be frequent or QP for European code and so on I'm not talking about crack deflection or long-term deflection for that matter so crack deflection is its own check that requires a separate uh, an analysis run to produce the results but we can have some correlation between this particular result which in this case will produce a cracked um, slab and this result which will produce the um, the theoretical crack widths um, that would be presented for this particular slab and arrangement so so these the only way they're correlated is by their um, combination parts we have Sustained load, which is 1 times self-weight, 1 times dead load, and 0.3 times live load. So we can make some um, judgments having these two combinations be identical in terms of what load cases they are including. So the first step, and we're going to look at reporting crack widths and crack deflection. The first step is we have to analyze the slab. So we'll go ahead and, and mesh the slab. And then we'll analyze and I'll analyze this for all combinations. This is just a li linear elastic analysis for this first run. Okay, and if I go and I check some results here, you can see I can select my combination list. If I check service total, for example, Z translation, I have 1.85 inches of deflection. Um, for service sustained, I have 1.33. And if I come on down here and I say well I want to look at the reduced rotational stiffness this doesn't show us anything because this only applies to cracked deflection results and we have yet to run the cracked deflection there's we have to run and design the sections first and then run the cracked deflection check the strips cracks along strip Y and along X those also don't show anything because we have not yet designed the sections so let's go through that process now I'll close the result display settings. I'm going to generate my strips. This is using FEM, so we'll select the second option there. And I will design the design sections. Those are designed. If I go to FEM, generate reinforcement, the program has added reinforcement to these slabs. It, at a certain depth, the program needs to know that for the crack deflection check. So the next step is to take and let's say calculate the crack deflection. 
Now at this point, this is only necessary in order to achieve number one, the crack deflection result, and number two, the reduced rotational stiffness results. I technically do not need to do this step if my objective is to look only at cracks along strip Y and X because those are associated with the regular service combinations. So if we just go ahead and reset the display and I turn on cracks along strip Y and I'll turn this on to total you can see the cracks along strip Y are cracks oriented in the Y direction cracks along strip X are cracks oriented in the X direction so here we're looking at cracks along X but we're looking at the Y direction support line because the cracks would form along that path in the other direction it's opposite as well we're looking at the X direction support line but the cracks are oriented along the Y direction so this will show us um, the reduced or excuse me the cracks along strips for service total and service sustained okay so let's go ahead and turn those off now if we go back to FEM and we calculate the crack deflection that's been completed if I now go into my load combination list I have one crack deflection combination if I look at this sustained load result the sustained load uh, result is just 1.33 that's just the uncracked state and if I now look at the crack deflection for the same condition this is called cracked underscore sustained load you can see at the cracked level it's 2.31 and now I can check reduced rotational stiffness about the X and about the Y axis so if we check the first one we should see values shown on this slab if we check the second we should see values shown on the other slab and that's what's happening here this shows us a range of um, reduced stiffness within the slab in the this is about the X like bending about the X direction and then this is bending about the Y direction which applies to this slab so it's a little easier to see when we isolate and look at this as a one-way slab versus let's say a two-way which we have you know biaxial bending in uh, in that type of a setup now what's important to note here is if I go back and I try to correlate the results between the cracked sustained combination and the regular sustained combination you can see I have this this whole zone right here has been reduced to about 0.42 where it's all green and then it starts to go back up you know here at the inflection point let's say to zero and then it creeps back to have cracking near support where we have fixity um, same thing for this direction they're basically the same uh, graph or the contour map if we look at the cracks um, along the y direction for service sustained you should see a similar type of uh, pattern here we have we have the maximum crack widths here in this zone where we have the most reduced rotational stiffness we have very little cracking here we have the inflection point and then we grow back into more crack width where we have more reduced or loss of stiffness so you can make that comparison if you have correlating um, combinations if you have any questions please contact support at adaptsoft.com thank you